about functions. Here is how they work. Functions, baby. Let's say you have a function. Well, how you do is you just say function and I can say fun. You open close paren and you do this squiggly bracket thing. And now inside of this function, you could add in something. So let's just throw an alert statement just to make it, this is a function, just to make this very obvious. If I go back to my code and I run it, and I run this page, nothing obvious is going to happen. Because I've created this function, now I have to call the function. So I guess here are the steps, right? For functions. This is how you create a multi-line comment, by the way, by doing slash and then asterisk. And then you sandwich it up like this and you end it. Step one, create a function. Step two, call the function. That's kind of it, okay, it's pretty simple. Now I call it. This is how you call the function. This is creating, create, and this is call. It's kind of like naming your child, John. It's like creating a child, but then to get his attention and have him come to you, you gotta say John. Here, you gotta say fun. If I go back here and I hit refresh, now it says this is a function. So that's pretty much the idea. Now what we need to do is let's start making it a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna change this alert because alerts get pretty annoying pretty fast. Now let's create a function. And the idea behind functions is it should do multiple things. So we should create a function. And what this function should essentially do is it should take in a name and then return to you. So I'll write this down. Let's create a function that takes in a name and returns to you uh, and says, hello, followed by your name. For example, if your name is Kazi, which mine is, the, ret the function should return, hello, Kazi. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So let's code this up. We'll, we'll say function, and then we will call this greeting, open close paren. And what this function will do is it'll ask, it'll do a prompt. And the prompt will say, what is your name? Question mark. And we will store this in a variable called name. Then what we will do is we will create final result or let's just call it result. And this will essentially, it should say something like, hello, plus name. Now notice what happens and notice what we'll have to fix shortly. But first let's just do this. And we will have it do console.log, the result, so we can read it. And remember, we created the function. Now what we need to do, because if we run it, it's not gonna do anything. We need to actually run the function. So we'll say greeting and then run it. What is your name? Kazi. And look, it says, hello, Kazi. Cool. But it, let's add in a, we need a space here. So how do we do that? Well, I can add a space like that. Or I can add in a space like that. Kazi. Okay. This is called string concatenation. I'm taking a string. I'm adding a space to it, then I'm adding the name to it. This is fancy, so I'll leave a little note for this right here, and I'll say string concatenation, like this.
Now, functions could also take in arguments. Which essentially just means, look, every function is going to have some kind of input. Here, our input is the name. So what we should probably do is have it outside of the function. And the function should be taking that as the input. That should That's the first thing that should be given to the function because the function is dependent on that information. If you don't give it that information, the function just won't run. So I'm just going to comment this out for now. And if I comment this out, this function won't run. So when I refresh, no prompt or anything comes up. So let's write our greeting function, for example, but it should take in an input. So before we go ahead and do that, I'm going to show you an example with if we had to get two numbers, how do we add them together? Okay, how do we add two numbers together in a function? Here's how we do it. Write function, and then I will say something like sum numbers and it will take in two inputs so you can give it any amount of inputs you want you could give it one input or you could give it two inputs and you could call them something like num1 and num2 whatever you want whatever makes sense so here i have a function with two inputs the thing i'll do with this function is i'll simply have it print out Okay, let's go here and let's say var result is equal to num1 plus num2 like this. And then I'll go here and I'll do num1 plus num2 like so. Save it. And now I just have to make sure I call this function like this. I'll go here. And when you call this function, you can't just call it with emptiness you have to actually give it the arguments it's expecting. As you can see, it's expecting num1 and it's expecting num2. So it's expecting two things. So I will go ahead and give it those two things. I'll give it 10 and then I'll give it another 10. So it should spit back out 20. And here is 20. How does this work? There's a function called sum numbers. It takes in two inputs, 10 and 10. Then it goes here and it goes, okay, result. And since num1 is 10 and num2 is 10, it adds them together and gets 20. And then this statement, all it does is just reads it out. If I can change this statement to result to just keep it simpler, refresh, and you get the same thing. Now, because we haven't enforced that those be numbers, you can also add in strings here and you can say, hello. And you can say, Kazi, maybe put a space here. And when you refresh, I should say, hello, Kazi. All it's doing is combining two things together. Let's, but just let's just leave numbers in there for now. And JavaScript has this another functionality. So if you had a string 10 and another string 10, let's see what happens. It actually puts them together like this, okay? What would happen if I gave it a string 10 and then a number 10? It would still put them together like this. So make sure that you are putting these in accurately and not putting quotes around it. You're just putting it normally and then it'll just combine them together like a number and add the, add the two together, okay? So let's go back to the original thing that we wanted to do. We wanted to give function, so greeting and input and then have it do the thing that we wanted to do. So let's go ahead and do that. I will put this prompt here of what is your name, I will say that greeting takes in your name, your name, like this. So now when we run greeting, we do the following. We take in the name and then we pass it to greeting like so. Okay, so let me go run this code and now watch what happens. What is your name? Kazi, and it goes, hello Kazi. And what it did is it took in the name as input 
and then this just became becomes a name and then that's it. So this is a better way to write the code. If a function is dependent on some piece of information, you to write clean code, you just make sure you add that in there because otherwise you are not writing clean code and somebody's reading your code will not know that that function is dependent on some piece of information. So make that very, very clear. Otherwise you will not get a job and the people who read your code will make fun of you and laugh at you. Just be careful about that. All right, in this video, we just wanted to cover functions. We wanted to cover functions with multiple arguments and we're gonna leave it off at that. I hope that you enjoyed functions. You kind of understood the basics of how they work. That's it for this video. In the next video, we will start working on loops. Thanks so much for watching. This is Kazi and I'll see you in the next video.